Hey, welcome to the Sharing Jesus podcast where we share stories, awesome ministry moments, and everything in between. Today, we are in the middle of vacation Bible school here at Sharon Church. We're going to talk about VBS and what's been going on all summer here at Sharon Church and what we got coming up. Today, joining me is our student pastor, Rob Cox, our associate pastor, Sean Collins, and our lead pastor, Michael Reese. How are you guys doing? Hey, hey. Doing great. We're glad to be back. Got the team together. It's been a busy summer. summer. Mm Mm-hmm. So we're going to find out and see what everybody's been doing yeah. and kind of leading out on this in this vacation Bible school. Caleb, you grew up doing vacation Bible school. Yeah. What, you know, we're going to be talking about vacation Bible school, past, present, and future. Now, some of the future, some churches are already doing, they've modified vacation Bible school. It became, instead of VBS, it became VBX. And yeah. there's a lot of ways to say that. There's other churches that do summer camps yeah day camps the vacation bible school experience is Mm -hmm. all that x is for but obviously you grew up in a traditional vacation bible school what stands out to you about vacation bible school i loved it as a kid but when i look back on it i I remember how corny it actually was how okay you've got to explain this you're 23 years old you're in the throes of the uh or do you consider yourself a generation z or a millennial he's z i'm gonna answer for him yeah i'm a z okay all right so let's hear what generation z i mean when i when i look back you know i think of all the decorations and the songs that they had us doing and just how corny everything was and all of that stuff only happened once a year Mm -hmm. that lady poured her heart and soul into that decoration i know she did but (laughs) Man, what well, is the real answer? And, I, and I'll second that. I mean, we we pour a lot of energy into something, and, and and it's not in vain. So I'm very appreciative. When you look back at it, yes, it it is corny. But as a kid, that's the biggest thing in the world. And to get a kid to come here and experience something that's huge and extra and extravagant or whatever. But in that, whatever we do, as long as they hear a message from the Word of God. It was all good. Uh, it didn't That's matter. The goal. That's it the goal. doesn't really matter what else happens that night. It's yeah. the message. And, and so, yes. What's your favorite time at VBS? Oh, we play dodgeball. All oh, the rocket ships. All oh, this the whole time. There's still the word being spoken, mm-hmm. and it's not our job to do the saving. So, so the kids hear the message, and then you hear about the student uh, or the kid that goes home and gets saved that night. You know, and you're like, yes, it was all worth it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yes, it might have been corny on the back end when you look at it, but for a kid, it is the funnest thing ever. And I I also, I remember, you know, like every year in VBS, there was always like the skits and stuff. And there'd be like a man who's a train conductor and they do this, like (laughs) looking back on it, it was like a corny skit. Like it was hilarious because... It's like a late night show that, for kids. Like what, that, we but, put on this dumb skit for. But yeah. that's one thing I will say that I mean. So y'all did have skits. Yeah. Okay. So because that's one thing in my experience here, we've we haven't done very many skits. I remember obviously one year we did because I was uh, in the skit. Um, do you remember the skit? Of course I do because I accidentally messed up. Oh, what was the skit? What was it about? It was, well, I was I was uh, I'm, get, he doesn't I was remember. Get, that's why he messed up. I was up. Gideon in the <laughs> yeah. I was Gideon uh, messing with the fleece, and I accidentally. I mean, I had my line memorized. I didn't have to do that, and I got nervous and I messed it up. But how old were you, dude? We're talking. It was a few years ago. Oh, okay. Did you get it wet first and then? Or, I, from, I can't, from I can't the remember. Asso- I just messed the up. Associate my line. pastor who just experienced his fortieth birthday. He is experiencing temporary amnesia right now. Yeah, it, it <laughs> wasn't that long ago. I mean, I was in my thirties. Okay. Oh, in the skit. Oh, that was a long time. Within the last ten years. Oh, so wow. Ten, year, ten years ago, I was like thirteen. 13. You were still yeah. in VBS ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you were the whole kid in VBS. But now I'll echo what Rob said as far as VBS. I mean, the words being spoken, and and you know, and that's what when we look back. Well, of course it's kind of like our imagination and it's kind of like as a kid our imagination and then all of a sudden we quit playing you know cops and robbers and you know cowboys and indians if if i can can i say an indian cowboys yes. and indians yes okay. you can Polit- so old man politically correct. but i mean you know but but like you know to these kids i mean man it is awesome i mean like yeah BB- if, you're, if you're seven or eight i yeah. don't think they're thinking they don't even know the word corny so no. they're they're like you, they're, the seeds are being planted of the gospel. Although Spin did look at me yesterday and say, "Dad, 
You're being corny. I didn't, even, I didn't even know that he... he... He's probably been hanging around Caleb. Which, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, he picked up that word. Which kids can tell, and we did a really good job with VBS this year. You know, we made it... All the decorations look good. Kids can tell when something doesn't isn't going to look that fun. Does that make sense? Oh, they can spot no fun. Yeah. Oh, quick. That's what I'm saying. Well, They're no when, fun when, when Spin <laughs> When Spin went through the tunnel and he came out, I mean, he went... Ooh. I, could, I could see his eyes. <laughs> yeah. And he was like... And that was the goal. We are like, out how do they Rob walk Guinness. in and be like, oh, I'm excited to be here. Thank, yeah. you, thank you, Rob Gannis, for putting that frame together. Yeah, that. And, uh, man, if there's any of our church members listening, uh, Ashley Johnson and Lindsey Crowder and Karen Reese. and oh. uh, There's oh, uh, Miss Mar- awesome. Marilyn and Miss Linda Finley. Oh, and, our and, teachers this year. Which, uh, Susan yes, Butler, mm, Jimmy you, Fern. We're recording this midway through VBS. We still got two days left, but so far, hey. Miss Linda Finley and Susan Butler have knocked it out the park. You talk about skits; just go watch their lesson. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And then we got Miss Karen Reese tonight. Oh yeah, and Which, Paula she'll Thompson, do awesome. And they're going to knock it out. Too. But Linda Finley gave every kid a five dollars Sonic gift card. Yeah, and and what's the second teacher do at that point? I don't, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, how that's do you what I was that, thinking because right? you know? the teachers were sitting in well, the back, and I'm sure yeah. when she gave them all they out, just they love were like, kids, man. Gosh darn. That, well, yeah. Yeah. well, I did kind of hear there oh, was and that some kid pressure, walked but, away saying, "Oh, that's corny," and so yeah. I'm gonna ride that one to the. Yeah, he's gonna go corny <laughs> at the corn dog over at Sonic. That's what he's gonna Re- do. Oh, the corn dog. <laughs> Re- real quick, drink of choice at Sonic. Drink of choice. Random. <laughs> Yeah, depends. Right. Yeah, talk about a pop quiz. And if uh, I like just got done playing basketball or something, large power eight, easy ice. That's my go-to. Okay. If I just got done playing basketball, probably ocean water. Peach, okay. Peach water. sweet tea. Peach sweet tea. Okay. Hey, yeah. uh, I, I'm I'm an old classic cherry uh, limeade, but for Shark Week, I got to go try it out. It's that Shark Week slush. Oh, oh. I saw that. I've already <laughs> had it. <laughs> Have you really? Yes. <laughs> I, I, it was a random. It was on <laughs> shark gummies with the strawberries. All right, sorry, yep, I can digress it. in a heartbeat. I saw a shark week. Yeah. All right, so we've already kind of hit uh, past. Well, real quick, Sean, did and let's see, Rob, you didn't grow up doing vacation Bible school. As no, a kid. Uh, to be honest with you, I probably went to two vacation Bible schools growing up. It just right. shows you kind of summertime, right? Sports, traveling, busy. Uh, I get that. Uh, Yes, I do remember being invited by the "quote unquote" church people mm-hmm. uh, to to come to VBS. Very thankful that people do that, and uh, uh, just encourage whoever's inviting people to VBS keep doing it, keep mm-hmm. doing it. A lot of people may not come, but some people will, and their lives can be changed possibly. And another thing, just kind of you know, uh, you know, you've kind of shared your story in past podcasts, and uh, not. You know, being real regular in church growing up, but um, did you ever get invited or go to a summer youth camp, or do you remember youth camp? No, no. As always, football sports always seem to take precedent there. Um, so that leads to the next question: When was your very first church camp? Very first overnight church camp was uh, next camp twenty sixteen. Okay, is that, or, is that when I mean, you is surrender? AYC count? You stay in the hotel. No. I went to AYC for no. several That's years. A weekend. Uh, is, um, that's a weekend. You got to yes. the week. Is that when the Lord was dealing with you to surrender to, to the ministry? It was, uh, it was 2017 when he did that. That, that might have been my first year. And, and so the year before, I was supposed to go to camp, but I switched and got a oh, that's right. I got a head job, and that's I couldn't because— God's providence. Yeah. And, and so it so delayed me. So when you me. surrendered in the ministry, that was probably your first year at church camp. Uh yes, 2017. I think so. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I was yeah, trying to get the timing down in my yeah. in my head, and so I was just you know and di- people come at it from different perspectives. Uh, Sean, you, I guess, went to vacation Bible school as a kid. One year. One year. One year. All right. And it was only it was not at a church. I mean, it was at it was at Holland Chapel. I came up here to spend the week with my grandparents. Oh, okay. Yep. And with my uh, grandpa, dad's dad. And um, yeah, I went to their church, Holland Chapel. Holland Chapel. Who it was. It? Shout out. Yeah, it was a shout out, but it was. I don't know. I'm like you, Caleb. As a, I mean, I will say this as a kid, it was just kind of creepy. 1990? Looking back at it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, and I get it. I get it. They cared about kids, and they were wanting to serve kids. Was it in the daytime or the nighttime? Daytime. Daytime. Yeah, they were still doing daytime. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, here I was. I didn't know these people from anybody. I never met them, and they're, like, telling me about Jesus. And, you know, I'm like, you know, it's just, they were, like, really wanting to get me saved. And guess what? That wasn't in God's plan right then. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still what they were planting seeds. I, they were. They yeah, were. Yeah. But planting seeds of the gospel. So we got this present vacation Bible school going on. And uh, Caleb, what are you doing during vacation Bible school? I'm He's doing, doing it all. I'm pumping up the kids with some opening music and closing music with a bunch of dance moves and getting them excited for VBS. Mm-hmm. And how many hats is uh, Brother Rob wearing? Uh, at the beginning, it was a lot, but... Uh, I'm glad you asked this question. He took uh, them all off and gave them away. Back in si- well, yes, a, exactly. I was like, a, "Here's a hat." That's our job. <laughs> I was just handing out hats. And, and so, delegate and disappear. <laughs> and that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. But um, be Tweet be that. honest. I was a little bit stressed out because we were going in. Uh, we didn't have a September to where we normally because uh, we had a COVID September. Um, Sunday school and VBS wasn't even on the radar. And that's normally when we give somebody the reins and say, hey, you got VBS next year. And so here it comes. Summertime's coming about. In March, we put out a plea, a video, and announcements. Hey, if you'd like to plan out VBS, come see me. Crickets. Um, nobody came. And because I think it's our church size and just our culture, uh, everybody assumes somebody else is going to volunteer. That's what I was going to ask. And, and, and yes, that can sometimes become stressful because I don't want to be the person that always asks the same people to volunteer because I know the ones that are going to say yes. So I don't want to overwork them. So I'm just – like VBS is going to happen. Here's my mission with VBS. Kids show up, and I've told this to the volunteers over and over and over. You don't need to overthink it or overwhelm yourself. They need to show up. They need to have fun eat a snack, and they need to hear the Word of God. If those things can happen each night, it's a success. How extravagant we make it, that's up to us. But nobody volunteered to help out uh, as far as the initial planning, and so we put out a sign-up sheet, and there was like four people sign up, and and uh, getting kind of stressful, you know, not, not enough. But we did find our teachers. I knew that was important. Let's find our teachers. So we found our teachers, everybody else, but at go time. Uh, I will say this about this church. At go time Sunday, there was plenty of help. Everybody jumped in and said, hey, stepped up. here's – and it kind of went along with the big idea from last night. Uh, you know, what are my gifts? And so people found areas that they're gifted in, and they got plugged in, and they started serving. Got them a T-shirt, and they went. And, and I've seen volunteers go from taking a, um, a lesson packet – and making all these uh, crafts and uh, activities with their kids, and it just fell together. And, and I'm glad it fell together. Now, w- I would have loved to have them signed up a month ago to help. Uh, so they could have planned it all, been a little bit less stressful on me, but it happened, and that's what it's all about. And so, uh, and yes, my hat of finding the next director for next year has already been given away. That's so cool. that, so so that's awesome, and so I heard I'm so, about that volunteer, and that's great. Yeah, so I'm so thankful for people stepping up, whether it be early or last minute, doesn't matter. They stepped up for a mission, and it's happening right now, and we're getting ready for night number three. Yeah, tonight. so we're excited. So I mean, the bottom line is what the the nugget that I've taken away is is that God's God, God's in the saving business. Amen. Words preached. So whether or not it's flannel graph Jesus. Or lights. Yeah. God he, God supersedes it all. He does. And, and he can move. And his word does it. And as we finish up this first segment, go back around to Caleb. I want to ask you this. I want to know, how do we go? This is the future of VBS at Sharon Church. How do we go from corny to cool? Uh, Anyone. I, I, I this think- is going to be very deep. It's called the next kid, right? Because we get the older kids, they get out. We get a new batch in. It goes from corny to cool each year with the age groups that move in and out. That's that. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. So keep keep grinding, keep doing. Um, as far as the cool factor, we can make it as cool as we want to. But my thing is, as long as the Word of God is preached, that's so true. it's good. So, in my opinion, this year, I think we did a pretty good job on the cool part. Yeah. Well, like I remember in years past, and it's no discredit to like 
the people who decorate or anything, but when there may have been like four or five posters hung up in the sanctuary, uh, which I get it. Some people don't want to over decorate, right? But why can't we create this cool scene of the theme of the week? And it's cool. That's just a huge reminder of the kids. It's like, this is why we're here. This is the theme. This is the story that we're putting you into. You yeah. know, I remember one year seeing uh, it had to do with the Bible character Jonah, and this church hung a 40-foot whale inside yeah. the sanctuary. That's cool. I mean, that's Man. not a, Yes. And it was... I, I don't know if it shop. was blowed up or whatever. Like yes, exactly. <laughs> that's so cool. There's a lot of ways that, and I think that sticks out. Oh, I remember the whale, like you said. Well, I remember the train, or I remember that, but they yeah. heard the word of God. One yeah. I, uh, one church that I know of, uh, really really cool. They it was an airplane theme, and they took their sanctuary and they built giant wings off the side. And actually, the news came down and looked at it and did a segment on it. It was a yeah, it was a giant airplane. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but Johnny Hunter said it like this. Years ago, I was sitting in one of his conferences, and you know, he was talking about different things that work, different things that don't work. He said, you know, some of y'all are out there, you know, saying, well, VBS doesn't work anymore. That's fine. Don't have your VBS. Guess what? They're going to come. Where, they're going to come to our church, and we're going to have VBS. And he was talking about growth, and you know, he just kind of laid it out on the line. Well, churches, we as people can, we can get lazy <clears throat> and think that. You know, they'll come just because there's a sign outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. But most people come to church because somebody invited them. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Hey, well, let's wrap up this segment. And in the next segment, we'll dive into uh, what our summers look like, uh, especially with this being the first summer back in full swing after COVID. And we'll talk about more of that right when we get back. Hey guys, welcome back to our VBS Summer Talk 2021. Can we all agree that this summer, 2021, has made us realize how much we didn't have going on last summer? Oh, dude, it's the first time you said that. It wasn't on our notes here. Uh, yeah, like it was, I think last summer what kept us busy was the anticipation of maybe getting to do something. Yeah. We had no, like, like we were like any day now, like any day it's going to give up, any day. It just kept, you know, it was like a little mountain yeah. climber on the uh, Price is Right. <laughs> it just kept oh, yeah. climbing, kept oh, climbing, yeah, right? Well, the, the way and, I realized it is me and my fiance last summer, we went to the lake probably 20, 30 times. Yeah. I've been twice this summer. Yeah. And it's been squeezed in. I'll say schedule. last summer was a blessing i guess for yeah. all those not not just for me for all those that just were over programmed and busy uh i think there was a lot of people last year that got to spend some good quality time together and there was a lot of people that probably missed out on some things too but yeah um uh, this summer had definitely showed me what all didn't happen last summer yeah. for sure yeah, but it, again, it was the busyness, it was the anticipation, it was the stress of are we going to go, are we not going to go, and plus, we did work in a lot of new yeah. things that we hadn't done. We did VBS last year, a virtual We did, we did yeah. virtual. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I remember. The egg hunt, or the egg, you know. Yeah. yeah we did the egg. Yeah. The I morning. mean, I remember. Did a lot of videos. In May, in June even, we were like, we may still go to camp, or like, the thought, the thought of it was still there, and so you were talking about, you know, the thought of possibly doing things kind of kept us busy. Yeah. Well, we had the state mandates, and matter of fact, as a trustee for the camps, basically the only guideline that we gave to both superintendents was they had to follow the state health guidelines of that state. Mm -hmm. And Arkansas was, they were going to have to wear a mask, they were going to have to, the sleeping conditions were a little different, mm -hmm. daily temperature checks. A lot of those now are not mandates, they're suggestions mm -hmm. or, or recommendations. And I don't remember when we pulled it. Was it? Uh, it was sometime in June when we finally decided mm -hmm. there was no going to, not yeah. going to be a next camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kept waiting and waiting, and of course we was on the phone. The directors were together on the phone. Hey, what are you guys thinking? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the mandate's out. Camp's not possible. Yeah, and <clears throat> here we are. We're on the cusp of going to camp with a really good, solid number. Yeah. I mean, a lot of churches are bringing a lot of kids. We've got more churches coming, mm -hmm. more new churches coming yeah. this year than we've ever had. Yeah. Which is yeah. Cool. I know Sean Walsh from one of our missionaries. He was a director of West Central Camp at Box Springs. And he said, 
sixty percent of the kids or seventy percent of the kids that were at West Central were first time mm-hmm. players. When you yeah. go two years in between a church camp, I I get that. That's probably the natural repercussion. Yeah, is you get all these first timers because they're, they've had two years to get to yeah. the age. And there's probably a lot of those kids that had that year off and the thought of going to camp just you know they may never go again just because it fell out of their routine Mm -hmm. Um, especially with picking up new routines like summer sports and other things Hmm. real quick uh sean start with you what have you done with your summer so far well um we were able to we traveled to west virginia um for the national meeting as you and Um, i our family miss karen yep family spencer spencer went uh his favorite part was the pool (laughs) <laughs> and getting to ride back, I heard he made new friends. He made new friends, yes. He was excited about that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so he liked the ice cream. So everything What everything stood out good. to you about going to – first of all, last year we didn't we didn't go on any trips. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was no vacations mm-hmm. We and besides going down to Lake Washita maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know, did we go play golf last year? No. No. I don't remember. We took a year off at golf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so – what stood out to you about West Virginia? You've been before. I have been before. What stood out the most is that nothing's really changed. <laughs> maybe a few stores have, have closed. Maybe a few have opened. But that's about it. Some of the same shops that we went to, like I remember the ice cream shop. I remember the pizza place, stuff like that. I don't want to get into politics, but I will mention that you know West Virginia has a Democratic governor, and Democratic-run states, or especially with governors, are the last to open and so we were the very first group to st- in two years or over almost a year and a half that has stayed in that huge Marriott in the capital of West Virginia, Charleston. And so we were the guinea pigs uh, for them to open. Let's bring the conservatives in. <laughs> yes, they were con- they were uh, understaffed. There was one cleaning person per floor oh, gosh. on a. 20 floor hotel or what it was well shout out to them the marriott they did a great job yeah i was it, yeah. very very impressed speaking of going back in the summertime caleb what have you been doing with your summer so far you've had oh, a couple gosh. of things yeah so i started off the summer with a bang went to branson with the family uh we had i had to open my calendar went to lol for a week i uh, worked a church camp for production uh at spring lake went to the beach for a week Got vacation Bible school this week and got another church camp next week and then another church camp after that. Oh, boy. Well, that That's called the ministry. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, Rob, you're pretty new to the ministry and, and Caleb is too. Uh, you know, they're coming, but his summer times have been wound up in this. I remember whenever there was only one church camp that we went to and it encompassed from pre K. There was classes for kindergarten family all the way. Camp. Yes, yeah. it was a family camp. But now you come into specialty camps. And speaking of camps in summertime, uh, Sean, you are our – what's the official title for next camp? Whatever Rob tells me to do. <laughs> Whatever hat he gives him. <laughs> and, but you remember going to camp. How's Sean, camp different? Sean's the brains behind operations. He's the brains. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, camp's pretty much, for me, I mean, you know, stayed the same because, you know, except for the tabernacle. You know, I do remember I took about a 10-year hiatus, and the tabernacle finally got built. And, and it was, you know. And you're and talking so that about was, the illustrious cool. Bog Springs. Yes, I am. Yes. I, I have been to both. I have been to, to both camps, and both camps have their, their niches. Uh, their, there's pros and cons to both. But, uh, but yeah, the that's the camp? big thing. What's the other camp? Bud Creek. Okay, you went to Bud Creek. Yeah, I just meant, you know, places. Yep, places. And Never been to Texas, though. The Pine I keep Springs. trying to drop hints when you go down to Texas that, hey, you need a chauffeur, and it never has worked out. No. Well, yeah, Doug, Goodman, Doug Goodman is normally my chauffeur when I take a Texas run because we're going down there for the trustees. And, and sure, I enjoy there's more than one seat in there. I enjoy visiting with Doug. <laughs> there, yeah, he could ride along. Yeah. Sit in uh, on the trustee meeting. I, and to think about that, you know, I grew up going to only one camp growing up. Growing up. And then once I got about ninth or tenth grade, it's when they we started going to two, we split it up going to a teen camp and a family, family camp. camp, which the teens could still go to the family camp if they wanted to. But, you know, a lot of the teens would go to the teen camp. And when you look at it now, especially nowadays, 
I realize how important that is. Because the, while the family camps are good and there's nothing wrong with them, uh, there's so much more impact that you can have on a kid's camp when you're preaching to kids, geared towards kids, kids' messages, and then the, vice versa for the teen camp. You're preaching to teens, geared to teens, uh, what they're going through, what they're struggling with, and so on and so forth. Well, follow up with that. Have y'all ever heard uh, some, you know, and a, thank the Lord, Next Camp has had some awesome speakers. Yeah. But growing up, we had uh, wherever everybody thought that uh, family camp, that we had to allow every any preacher that wanted to preach the opportunity to preach at camp. So therefore, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, or even the mid morning service because yeah. we had two services a day. A day. And you'd you'd allow somebody to preach, and you know this person doesn't know how to speak to kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, why did they? But all it was was they didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings, so they let somebody preach that has no business preaching to little kids. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. always a disaster. But I want to say this: I have seen a sermon that I thought was a bomb. And kids get saved. Yeah, yeah. And it's just the power of the word of God. But you're right. You can specialize. Who can? Who? Right. Who has the skill to speak to kids? Not everybody does. Right. No. No. And I think it's. I think just especially and like I said, nothing wrong with family camps. They're great. But when we get the chance to be a part of a, a team that organizes a teen camp and a kids camp, uh, it's it's really cool to to spend our time focusing on uh, the week and the message that are going to be spoken that week uh, for each individual kid's lives uh, because we know what kids go through and teens go through. Uh, so when you get to speak to that, I think it's been beneficial for their, their life. Hmm. Well, Rob, I'm going to ask you, what have you done with your summer so far? You've had a lot of things going on. Yeah, well, it seems that way, but uh, as I've told you before, it's not like a coaching summer. Um, high school sports have gotten so crazy, and I'm glad to be out of that now and know that there's a, a bigger thing out there in the world than just you know your little circle of sports. And I love sports and love the impact that I was able to have on kids and uh, the platform I had. But uh, now the uh, summers look different. And they're they're still busy and fun and all that, but. Uh, we we were able to go on a vacation with family. Uh, that was fun. Rowan's uh, first, uh, well, I guess it was her second beach trip. Her first one, it was a three-day, um, she's just, you know, it was like three months old. And so we take Rowan down there with uh, Haley's parents and uh, sister. And so had a fun time there. But uh, the planning going into, um, you know, camps and stuff, very thankful to have uh, people that were able to, well, we transported kids to the family farm. Uh, I planned it all. People probably thought I was going, and they had no idea I was going on vacation that week. But I'm so thankful, like Brother Sean, and you stepped in one day, Pastor, I think, to uh, help get kids down the family farm. And, uh, you know, uh, Brother Charles, Miss Maurice for driving, and Brother Corey. And, and when people step in, yes, there's more planning involved when you aren't in it. Like, you got to make sure everything's taken care of. And I'm sitting there, you know, Monday morning, like, all right, I'm eating yep. some breakfast. Uh, are they on the bus? You know, but but they knocked it out. And so you got Family Farm. Uh, we got VBS. It, we talked about that in the previous segment. Uh, a, lot, a lot of planning, coordination, delegation going into that, getting people the pieces or the parts that they need to be successful. Uh, and, that, and that kind of stuff will keep you busy. Uh of course, you've got Next Camp coming up. What, <coughs> what do you look and and you are really this will be your first year as VBS, excuse me, as Next Camp director, and uh, you <coughs> had the opportunity last year. Obviously, COVID slam dunked everything. Yeah, it was easy last year. Yeah, <coughs> we're not having camp. <laughs> <laughs> so this year, what do you look forward to the most about directing this team camp? Um, really. Um... Becoming the director, it's a little bit different. The the 2019, I guess I stepped into the co-director role they gave to me. Paul was kind of uh, stepping back, and he yep. was passing baton. And so I naturally I go in busy mode because as a director, you have to be able to or you have to be in the know on everything in case something falls through the cracks or somebody last-minute emergency can't do it. 
the buck stops with me, so I got to make sure. So, so I'm going around and I'm like kind of shadowing people. What, what all happens here at camp? What's all the stuff that I don't see? And then, so going around, and so I was really busy 2019. And the worst part, and I told this to a family yesterday, the worst part about being involved in the leadership of a camp is you can't just go and be the youth pastor there, and, and just you because you're so much time directing the camp that you don't get that time there. And so I was, I'm so thankful for like a pastor like you that'll go and uh, be in the cabin with them. And, and I just didn't and want parents. to be by myself. I was asking <laughs> you that question. Other day. So who else is going to be else with is me in the cabin? Uh, I got Robert Johnson's going to be in but there. But Robert, he told me yesterday, he said, I don't mind being by myself. I'll knock them boys out. So. He'll knock them out. And so um, going into it, uh, the leadership meetings that go into it, what I really found out is um, when you sit out there and you plan it well and you delegate things and get the right people in the right spots, camp kind of just happens, and I get to just be a byproduct and just sit back and watch. Uh, yes, there's going to be something. I, I, unfortunately, I have to be the mean guy. Somebody's got to be the mean guy at camp. I got to be it. Uh, you know? Unfortunately, and, that's and it. So hopefully, I don't have to be the mean Brother guy. Brother Paul didn't mind being the mean I, guy, yeah, too. So I, I don't want to be the mean guy because I'm there to have fun. So I got all the crazy ideas that I got to tell myself no on first <laughs> before I tell anybody. No, we can't do that. It would be fun, though, but we can't do that. Uh, but just uh, looking forward to taking a group back, you know, like you mentioned, two years off. There's going to be two groups of students that are there. It's never happened before. Two groups of students that have never been to next camp. Uh, as far as the they could have went because you missed the the sixth graders uh, the previous year and now you have a new batch of sixth graders that are now seventh graders and so uh, we're gonna be um, young heavy I guess um, new kids and that so sense. we get to uh, put on this camp and we got James Taylor coming in he's gonna present the word I've heard him speak before I think he's gonna do awesome uh, he's actually gonna be warming up on the previous camp yeah yeah so so and Caleb as well and so our Worship team's gonna majority of them's gonna already be down there, and they're gonna be leading worship the week before with James, and then they're gonna do it again for uh, next camp. And I like I just like going and seeing teenagers kind of get away from the world. Um, mm-hmm. Not that we need to forget what's going on in the world. Not that we need to pretend that hey, all that stuff doesn't exist in the world. But the idea that they get to f- you know, intentionally make a decision or or maybe unintentionally parents might have told him you had to go. But they are there at camp by God's providence, I guess. They're they're there. And a lot of these teenagers, I'm looking forward to the decisions that are gonna be made. Uh a lot of lives are gonna be changed. Uh I mean, there's gonna be kids surrendered to ministry here. There, there's there's gonna be kids get saved and, and just uh, looking back on, oh, it didn't happen last year. Well, this was a big reminder for me last year, and this was a big challenge. Uh, this might be for another podcast, but we don't need to necessarily w- – I'm, I'm glad camp happens, but we don't need to just wait on camp to happen to expect God to do something big. Oh, yeah. He can do something big each and every week in your ministry. And so don't just wait on camp to be your crutch for a move of God. Uh uh, be, be constantly involved in your kids' lives, and, and you'll see God do amazing things. Well, let me ask uh, Sean this, because uh, get his unique perspective. Why do you think so many of those things Rob just mentioned happens at camp versus talking about the salvations and decisions? decisions uh, yeah, spiritual, spiritual decisions. decisions. Yes. Yeah. Why do you think, off the top of your head? Y'all, y'all know me. I'm famous about pop quizzes. So. Sure, pop quiz. Yep. So off the top of your head, why does that happen? Yeah, well, I mean, just the genuine salvations happen because a, a kid is, uh, they unplug for just a little bit. They get away from their normal surroundings. They get away from their, um, you know, the TVs, the video games, the cell phones, the radios, you know, and everything. And it's just a moment where... They get to focus on God. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well... Not only that, I mean, you have all around you the gen. Even though it's a lot of fun, I mean, you know, uh, the ping pong, the zip lines, the the games, the organized rec, uh, you still see God's general revelation, God's creation, and you know, you you get away for a little bit. Let me pick on this uh, young man to my left and Caleb, because you mentioned something, Sean. You said, "Get out of the norm. Get out of the routine." Yeah. How important is it, or do you think it's no importance, growing up 
you have grown up in a cell phone world, how big a distraction do you think that is at camp? It's a something we're not getting away from. It, at first, when cell phones first started getting coming to camp, yeah. they were everybody was policing them, policing them. <laughs> now they're not really policed anymore. Well, there's no service, so I don't care what you do on it. There's no service. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, what do you think? Yeah. You can take pictures. We encourage do, pictures. Do you think it's a distraction? <clears throat> it's it's probably the biggest thing about Bog Springs that that benefits the camp experience because while there is still a little bit of service, like no one is no one else is sitting in their cabin scrolling on their phone well for one there's not signal in the cabins but like you you're going to be outside playing right you would be surprised at the tiktoks that high schoolers send back and forth between each other on a daily basis but what you're doing is they're not sending tiktoks and this sounds crazy but they're not sending tiktoks or videos or anything back and forth for a whole week and they're getting worship and a message every night like a, a revival, I guess. I mean, I mean that's like, what it is. Uh, people, like, you know. Every kid coming back from camp, I guarantee you, their screen time, guaranteed, is down by at least 70%. Oh, easy. Oh, wow. And that yeah. tells you everything you need to know right there. Yeah. Mm, yep. and it's like not. That. And it's not really – It's. I won't say it's a cell phone. I'll say <laughs> it's social media. Well, yeah, but yeah, – yeah. Well, that's, but yeah. that, that's what are, we're talking about. They're, yes. they're yeah. together. Yeah. That's the avenue that they go but to even, social media. I mean, even if we want to talk about the big stuff. That could definitely be a podcast, kids and I mean, just right here. I know adults it, and cell phones. I know it exactly the, the boys in our youth group, if you want to talk about the deep stuff, you know, boys don't have internet service for a whole week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you're completely, and I know we always say, oh, they're getting unplugged, they're going like, but it's like for real. Like it's stuff they're doing on a daily basis. They're not doing it for six days. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why yeah. so much life change happens. More, more accurately, well, if you it's about get, four and a half. But well, yeah. you know, but yeah. Well, and obviously, but if you want to get take real, the four real, and a half. yeah. Same thing with the ladies too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So that summer. Well, that well, you and I love the the wrap up in here is that I want to know whenever we head to camp. And we're ending our summer, and I'm praise the Lord for working with y'all guys because <clears throat> it's. I, I think all four of us bring you know different perspectives. Uh, we're literally from uh, different generations. We live twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, and uh, right here at this table, and we're talking about how we do reach summer people with the gospel. Yeah. yeah, and then we got you know right after next camp, I get home, and this is why we're not going to session one. I yeah, need, I need a break. Yeah, yeah, kids camp. <laughs> and then you go back. I can't yeah. be the first one at camp, the last one to leave, and then turn around and do it the next day. But uh, <clears throat> I will say this to anybody that listens, because you're going to probably listen to this podcast before camp actually happens. I want to say, hey, if you know of a kid that wants to go to camp, that yes, the t-shirt deadline has passed. However, the deadline I know a guy. for you to go to camp is when that bus leaves the parking lot. And so if you know a kid, you got a neighbor – um, and you've heard these stories about what happens at camps and, and, and you want to be a part of that story, hey, invite him to camp. Tell him to you know come see us on staff here or, or that big white bus is going to leave on this day. <laughs> Go get on it. Amen. Uh, come and talk to us, and we'd love to have your yeah. kid come to camp with us. Well, it's been, uh, been an awesome summer so far. And like I said, things have been busy, and we may not be completely back in – full swing or feel like it but it's it's definitely been busy thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast we pray that you've been encouraged in a way possibly sh- shared some stuff uh, with you that all, all help us continue on the mission of following jesus loving others and reaching the lost